Chapter 8. She didn't win, Dad says the words at dinner like he's asking me to pass the salt. Although I feel a twinge of disappointment for Mom because I know how much she wanted to win, I'm relieved. Then she'll be coming home tomorrow? Dad stirs his peas into the mashed potatoes on his plate. He's getting pretty good at cooking vegetables, but his mashed, mashed potatoes are lumpy, and of course there's no gravy. She'll be staying on a while. What do you mean? If she, lo if she lost, why is she staying? She got runner-up, and apparently she, some hotshot manager in the audience thinks he can get her a record deal. Suddenly, nothing on my plate looks good. How long would that take? Dad finally looks at me. Those kind of things can take a long time, Toby. How long? He looks me square in the eyes. Sometimes they never happen. Well, Mom wouldn't stay forever. How long will she stay? I'm almost yelling. Toby, I'm not the person to answer that question. I'll give you your fo her phone number and you can ask her yourself. Yeah, give me the number. I'll call her. Dad shakes his head, gets up, and goes into the kitchen. The way he walks with his jaw set and shoulders stiff reminds me of something I had forgotten or blocked out. The fight. Their last fight. It was in this room, at this table. Dad got up and stomped away, angry, while Mom continued to yell at the wall. Shutting my eyes tight, I try to erase that memory. But it plays over and over in my mind, and the strangest thing is, I don't even remember what the argument was about. Dad stands in front of me, a piece of paper in his hand. I take it, push my chair away from the table, and run up the stairs. I grab the hall phone with the long extension, take it into my room, and stretch out on my bed. I start to dial the number, then stop. I don't need to talk to Mom. She won't stay away long. She wouldn't. After all, she didn't take her old guitar and pearl necklace. She would have taken them for sure if she wasn't coming back. And if mom does get a record deal, she'll send for me in a heartbeat. We'll travel around the country in her big bus that says Opalina Wilson and the Delta Boys or whatever her backup group is. I'll count her money for her. I'll be her manager. I'll be the youngest manager in the history of country music, probably in the history of any kind of music. The Delta Boys will call me Tex. I close my eyes and watch the tail end of that big bus ride down Interstate 40 to towns where people crowd into concert arenas to hear mom. My breaths even out with each billboard we pass. When I wake up, the clock on my nightstand reads 10 minutes past 10, and for a minute, I don't know if it's the same night or the next day. Outside my window, stars twinkle in a dark sky. I've been asleep for three hours. The pants I wore yesterday are slung across my chair, and Cal's letter from Wayne is poking out of the back pocket. I forgot to return it to Cal today, but he never mentioned losing it. Goofy Cal probably doesn't even know he dropped it yet. Again, sorry. I get up, pull out the letter, and read it again and again. Then I tear it tear a piece of paper from last year's math notebook and write a letter to Wayne. I tell him all the things Cal and I are doing. I tell him about Kate getting her driver's license, his mom's roses, and Zachary Beaver coming to town. I tell him that the ladybugs haven't arrived yet and that we ate Bahama Mama snow cones at Wiley Womack's stand and thought of him. I tell him all these things and more and then I sign, sincerely, your brother Cal. A few minutes pass and I hear Dad snoring down the hall. Holding my shoes, I walk down the stairs and try to keep the steps from creaking. Outside, I get on my bike and ride to the mailbox in the front of the post office before heading to the lake. It's cool and the breeze feels good against my face. I open my mouth, wishing I could swallow enough air to lift me like a hot air balloon and carry me away from this stinking town. At the lake, I jump off my bike, run up to the water, and lie sprawled flat on the grass looking up at the millions of stars and full moon. The moon reminds me of times when I was five or six and couldn't fall asleep. Mom would slip into bed next to me and shine the flashlight on the dark ceiling. See the moon, she'd say, pointing to the perfect round light? Let's make it dance. She'd move the flashlight, causing our moon to trot or waltz back and forth across the ceiling. We'd laugh, and she'd make that moon dance until my eyes got so drowsy, I fell asleep. Of course, that was kid stuff. These days, I lull myself to sleep thinking of Scarlet swinging back and forth on her porch swing. Music, music softly plays, and I figure it's from some house far away, but the sound gets closer. James Taylor is singing, You've Got a Friend. Are you okay? Scarlet stands above me, holding a transistor radio. I look at her red toenails and wonder if she puts cotton balls between each one before painting them. Most guys would jump up, but I lie there like a dork and squeak, yeah, I'm fine. I don't know what it is about this girl that makes my voice go up two octaves. 
Are you sure? From the ground, I have an incredible view of her long legs wearing a pair of short white cutoffs. Now is a good time to get up, but I stay there, stretched out on the ground like some corpse. Yeah, kind of tired. Rough day at the office. My ears are on fire. All the words in Webster's Dictionary, and I choose those. Finally, I sit up. Do you come here often, I ask? Each second I approach Dork Eternity, but she doesn't seem to notice. Not that often, only when I break up with a guy. You broke up with Juan? I try not to sound too excited, but my words come out squeaky. If I stay calm, I'll have this voice thing under control, though it's hard to stay calm. Yeah, it looks that way. Her voice quivers, and she chews on a long strand of hair. She's just inches from me. I want to reach for her, pull her toward me, and tell her... It will all be all right. I want to smooth her hair, massage her neck, kiss her toes. Instead, I wrap my arms around my knees. Why'd you break up? He stood me up. He said he'd go with me to my great-grandfather's birthday in Amarillo. We gave him a big fancy party for turning 80. Man, that's old. Scarlet sits next to me. A shiver runs through my body. For two months, Juan kept saying he was going. Then, at the last minute, he backed out. He didn't even give me a good reason. What a jerk, I say in a deep voice. Do you have a cold, she says. I skip a rock across the water, thankful that it's dark because my face feels red. I'm feeling guilty for all the things I'm thinking about, but I know I would be in heaven just holding Scarlet Stalling's hand. We sit there together in silence, listening to the music from the transistor radio. I love this song, she says, turning up the volume. Close to you by the Carpenters, please. And I bob my head to the music, wishing I had enough nerve to ask her to dance. If I only knew how to dance, I probably would. Would you dance with me? She asks. Sure. I stand, feet planted firmly on the ground, arms glued to my sides. She giggles. It would help if you put your arms around me. A huge lump slides down my throat. I circle her shoulders, wishing I had taken a Fred Astaire class or something. Wherever people learn to dance. Once, Mom tried to teach me the two-step in the kitchen, but I was a complete klutz. Scarlet pushes my arms lower until they surround her waist. Her hands lock together behind my neck. And she starts to move slowly in a circle. I follow her lead. Even standing in bare feet, she's a few inches taller than me. My forehead tingles from barely touching her chin. Her skin is smooth as powder. I try to breathe in her scent, but I suddenly become aware of my sweat. If I knew I would have ever had a chance at dancing with Scarlet Stalling at Gossamer Lake tonight, I would have worn deodorant. I would have rolled a whole bottle over my entire body because just the sight of Scarlet stalling making, makes me sweat. And now, being this close to her, I'm sweating buckets. This is nice, she says. The way she says that in her sweet voice makes me remember to breathe. And in this moment, I actually enjoy dancing with her to that song. Heck, we are that song. Why do stars fall down from the sky every time you walk by? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Out, she releases me and jumps back. Did I step on your toes? No, she slaps her arm. Mosquitoes. When are they ever going to spray around antler? Suddenly, I feel them biting my ears, my cheeks, every inch of my exposed skin. I better go, she says. Thanks for the dance, Toby. You're great, she leans over, kisses me on the cheek, picks up her radio, and dashes off. I'm great. Me, Toby Wilson. Great. She said it. She even sealed it with a kiss. Or did she say it's late? No, she said great. I ride back home with Scarlet Stallings, kiss on my cheek, thinking how Wayne is right. Antler is the best place on the face of the earth.